Hi everyone, today I thought we would have a go in this um, Rita Berman book. This is, um, oops. This is Devout Under Der Lupe Zuvasa and I found this cute page and I thought I would have a go with my um, Castle Arts metallic pencils. I felt it's quite fun for underwater retype things, critters and plants. So I'm going to start with our, our lobster and then do some plants as well. Now, there's a lot of really pretty colours in, um, in the set and I thought we would use some pinks and purples. So I'm going to start with a dark purple, just trying to find the one that I want, the amethyst, and uh, sort of do the edge. What I'm going to do with this is I'm not going to look too much at all the details. I'm going to uh, try to just um, concentrate on giving the um, lobster some shape, really. I'm thinking, we've got all these lovely details, flowers and swirls and different things, but I'm not going to sort of worry too much about those. I'm just going to have some fun trying to add some pretty colours. So as you can see we're starting with the easy bit, well I think it's easy anyway, and putting down some of the dark. This is probably the darkest purpley shade there is. Um, I think for this I'm just gonna do it all in this dark colour. Sorry you probably can't see. trying to figure out what I've done with my sharpener. I had a really nice sharpener in here and um, it was quite new and uh, it's vanished. Um, I, the second thing I've lost, I lost a pencil earlier um, but I found it again luckily, eventually. <laughs> right so with the, let's start with this and what I'm going to do is just try and add some shape. So even though they're metallic pencils, I try and treat them like they're normal pencils. So I'm going to add like that, and that's going to be my darkest bit, and then I'm going to come in with a lighter pencil. I think what we'd do is we'd do the sort of pincers and the legs and things in the darker shades, and then we'll do the... Um, Try and fade it in a little bit, and then we'll do the um, body in pink, and it'll be a bit different. I'm going out of the line, but hey, you know I don't worry about these things. Um, oh yeah, we need to do this one, don't we? So I hope everyone's well. Um, it's quite a sunny day here. I think it's going to get warm. My children couldn't decide what my one son always wears his coat. He likes his coat because it's got good pockets to put his wallet and his phone and his key. He's got a door key and uh, other bits and bobs in. But uh, my other son keeps them in his trouser pocket and he doesn't like um, having the hassle of wearing a coat. But it's tricky because in their college um, they keep all the windows open to keep lots of air flowing through the rooms. And so uh, he gets cold inside, so he wasn't really sure. I'm gonna go around there, I think, like that. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go do that on that one too. Now we've got these arches. I'm gonna try and fade towards the top might be a bit dark, but anyway. Um, so yes, the doors and windows left open to let fresh air in. Um, particularly his physics teacher, she's always been a bit um, strict. Although she, um, she's apparently puts, she still pops her mask on when she wanders around the class. She gets a little nervous, and I don't blame her. But um, the students don't wear them apparently. Um, 
yes, we'll move on to a slightly lighter shade of purple. Just having a look on my um, on my chart, I've done a swatch chart. So the violet sapphire I'm going to use next, um, just so you can see. And firstly on these, um, to just fade the colour down a little bit. It's not that different in colour. I find quite a few of these are quite similar, but for me that's not a disadvantage because the similar colours are the ones I really like. So if I run out one, I've got a really similar one. Or if I'm doing a picture that isn't too precious sort of thing, I can use the one that I don't like quite as much that's really similar but not quite. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So uh, it's, it's rather nice having sort of almost duplicates. I think my going to run the black out the quickest though because the colours aren't very intense so if you want some shadow you have to use the black and so uh, I think I'm going to run that out. Um, where are we going here? So uh, yeah, so coat decision was tricky, but he wears a light Mac so he can um, take it off and pop it in the pocket of his bag. My other son wears a big coat. They always wear a, a hoodie as well and a long sleeve t-shirt. I don't know how they don't boil, but I guess if you're not in the sun, it's not so warm. And uh, also my one of son who prefers the lighter coat or no coat, he'll get a nosebleed if it gets too hot, if he gets too hot. So on hot nights, he'll often have a nosebleed in bed or um, in the shower if he has the water too hot, which he has a habit of doing because he likes a hot shower that uh, gives himself a nosebleed. But uh, I used to get quite a few as a child. Now the lightest colour I'm going to use, I think, is the... What colour is that? Uh, I'm just checking my swatch chart. I think the iris purple is going to be my last colour. And uh, I'm just going to sort of take this down to the end really and try and fade it so it's quite pale. So you can see that there is a transition of colour. It's not just all the same colour. Now the shine on these, they're metallic, um, isn't huge, you know. I didn't expect it to be, to be honest, having had experience of, <clears throat> excuse me, a few other brands of metallic pencil, I knew that it wasn't going to be like mega shiny, but I really liked the um, tones, the colours, um, this sort of quite muted and a bit different, which is always fun. I'm just going over here for a change rather than going down to the pincer. So that was, uh, that was what sort of attracted me really. And so uh, that was fun. And uh, I was lucky enough to get sent these as a little prezi. And uh, I'm really pleased with them. I think I'm probably going to run them out quickly because uh, they are nice. Um, but hey, I would, I think, I always think that it's nice you get much better value for money i realize this is a gift so i didn't pay for it but if you use something so i said to my mum she said oh what did you get from um from your husband for your birthday and i said oh a really expensive set of pencils it was a full set of prismas which in the uk is expensive and uh, she said oh are well, you going to save them then for special occasions and i said well no because I want to get value for money from them. I don't want them to just sit unused. Although yesterday I had a complete disaster with Prismas. Um, I was using, now it was one that I bought as a second. Um, someone was selling off some seconds. So it wasn't from my new set and they had damage. So she couldn't guarantee that they would be any good sort of thing because Prismas don't like being damaged. Anyone who's had experience of them will know. And... Uh, she um and i you i kept sharpening it kept breaking so i used my um this sharpener derwent super point mini which sharpens everything perfectly the lead broke in there as well 
Now that never happens. I'm going to do the body in pink. I'm just going to choose a pink. Hmm. We have sort of reddish colours and we have pinkish colours. Um, I'll show you on my swatch chart. So we have the Garnet Lake and the Magnetic Mauve are the sort of pinks. And then we have Jasper Purple and Burgundy Rose, which are redder. And then we have the more dull reds, which are the Jasper Peach, Topaz and Bloodstone. I think I'm going to go for these two, but I haven't got an even lighter shade. So I've only got the two and they look really similar. Garnet Lake, Magnetic Mauve, let's find them. That's the Magnetic Mauve. That's the Garnet Lake. They look really different if you look at the pencils together. But I'm going to do a new scribble. So there's Magnetic Mauve. This swatch chart, and get it really hard, is set in such a strange order. And here's the Garnet Lake. I'm trying to work out which is darker. I think it's really difficult. I think the Garnet Lake is slightly darker, so I'm going to use that first. So here it is. And I'm going to use it carefully first in this eye area. I want this to be slightly darker because it's sort of set in. So I'm not going to use the lighter colour. I'm just going to use all of Garnet Lake and do the same on the other side. So I'm trying to put more layers on the edge to the middle. Yes, so I had this um, pencil and as I said it came slightly damaged so there was an expectation it might not be particularly good and oh my, was it ever rubbish. I sharpened it in that Derwent sharpener three times and the lead broke every time and the pen I lost half the pencil. I was like, oh, and it made me really frightened of using my new prismas in case that happens to them. But actually, I've uh, used them already, and um, I used one, um, sharpened one, sorry, and it sharpened perfectly fine. So I need to just be brave, and I will use them again because they have, obviously they are lovely pencils. As everyone knows, I have only got a small selection. But uh, now I've got the 150 and I just feel really lucky. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing a harder layer and then fading it towards the middle. And, uh, and sort of ignoring all the detailing as I said I was going to. Um, yes, yeah, so that was a bit scary, but uh, I also have got a Prisma sharpener, which I used on it first and it broke and I tried both holes and I ended up with them. Um, hmm, I might do that differently. I'm just going to leave that for a minute. And that was the Garnet Lake. We're going to go on to the Magnetic Mauve now and finish off um, these areas. So I'm just going to go over the sort of faded bit and just take the colour right to the middle. I want it light in the middle to make him look like he's got some shape. I realise that the pencils are shiny so they should give some shine but they don't but I still want to uh, um, sort of do shading with them as well if that makes sense. I hope it does. I can see quite a lot of sparkle on that page now. I've got no idea if you can see it but uh, to say it's not um it's not like a shiny um gel pen or anything it's just you know. now these are this is looking quite purpley what i have found with these is that the pigment isn't um perfect um like if i color on one side of the pencil i sometimes get a slightly different color to if i color on the other side of the pencil it's if they're not quite mixed brilliantly um I think anyone who was going for perfection might find that a bit annoying, but I'm not that worried. I still really like them. And they are a budget pencil, you know, we're not paying um, Karen Dash prices for them. But they're, I know they're not cheap still, you know, and uh, but uh, I still like them. 
but it's just in worth you knowing that. Um, so sometimes, as I say, but apparently um, there is a Caran d'Ache pencil that does that too, where the pigments aren't properly um, mixing. Now I'm going to use the amethyst again for the tail. I've decided to go purple on the tail, but we've got a line around the edge, and I'm thinking I might go around that and sort of fade it towards the top, like that, on each one. And then we use our other purples inside. So we're not going to um, highlight all of the detail. I just thought it might be fun just to take some notice of this line and sort of separate off these different bits. Just a bit different way of doing it, really. Now these ones, I'm... Hmm, I think I'm just going to do solid. They're a bit small. You could try and do them like these, where we did a bit darker at each end, but I think that's going to be quite tricky. And I'm really hoping that my picture isn't too dark, because um, I think my light and camera, I think it's really bright and sunny, but the book's in the shade. So uh, I'm sort of getting used to this. I might be better off shutting the blind. The sun is starting to come across, actually. You can, it's, it's just, you can see it there, but it will be on the book soon. And uh, at the moment, the tripod is shading the book. So uh, I'm not seeing it. Also, the tree is moving around outside, creating flickers of light, which might be affecting the camera and the lamp. Right, so that's that bit. So I'm going to go to the violet sapphire and do within these areas. And I'm sort of going to do around the edge in a hard layer and then reduce it towards the middle, less layers. And we'll add our last purple in the center. Now I've been thinking about whether to do a background on this or not. I think I might not. Um, I could just do a bit of blue pastel or something. But as I say, I'm thinking I probably won't bother. I think he'll stand out better from white than from... Um, Um, stand out better from white than with a sort of blue background. So, okay. And my last is the iris purple. Whoops, there we go, you can see. And I'm just going to sort of finish it off really, tidy it up, and put some colour in the middle. So it's just colour everywhere really, but it's just a bit darker on the edges than in the centre. That's my plan. So the um, orange pencil, what I found was happening was it was really sort of crumbling. It was strange. And I think I might have been pressing too hard as well. The, I was trying to do a solid colour and I think that might have been a bit of a problem. Now I think these two flowers would both look rather pretty in orange. And what I'm going to do is grab a mahogany which is a sort of bronzy browny colour first to start off the um, bottoms of the flowers. To put down a fairly thick layer and then reduce it down towards the tip like that and do that on each petal. So quite simple, quite quick as well. Now I'm going fast, you don't have to go this fast. I uh, I want to try and get it fairly even and it's easier if you're slower to do that. But uh, I tend to just go fast. So 
sometimes I, I have done a speed colour before video but it didn't people didn't like it really but um, I can imagine now I've got so much faster at colouring it might be a bit confusing <laughs> if I sped up much more I think people like the talking but I know other people do speed colours and they're really popular so I thought I would just give it a go but it just didn't seem to um, go down well so uh, that was fine I've also experimented with silent real-time colouring just because um, I used to find it difficult to record in holidays and things because everyone was around. I'm trying to do this so you can see, a bit awkward. Um, but um, now I've got my colouring room, I can do recording in the holidays. We've actually got a half term coming up in a few weeks time. I'm hoping I can get ahead um, with colouring and I won't have to um, do too much recording. Though the children um, will be working some of the time so while they're working I can be recording. We've also talked about um, the summer holidays and they think they're going to be set a lot of work to do so uh, I'm going to ignore those bubbles. Bubbles. Um, so they might. So I sort of said to them, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a little bit of work each day, or you know, I would say have a couple of weeks off first, then maybe do you know a few, um, an hour a day or something, you know, and just get it done within an hour and then have fun. But um, they weren't sure. They said they might rather have more of a rest and do a f more time each day or something. But while they're working, you see, I could be recording. Um, I can shut all the doors and then they can't hear me. It doesn't distract them. And uh, that could work. The only thing with that is that um, if I'm not in the room, sometimes they get distracted so sometimes they sort of need someone there to push them to work but they also want to do some live streaming and making their own videos so while they're doing that i could be making my own right dragon orange it's a fun color i'm going to go over the top of everything and you'll see what a fun orange it is it's very bright when it's not mixed with the uh, mahogany. Look. Really, I'm just putting a hard layer on top so that it sort of mixes with the colour below. Oh, that sun is coming round. It seems very bright today. I suspect it's getting really warm outside. Might have to pop my washing outside. I uh, tend to keep it on an error and actually it's by the back door and the back door is almost all glass and which was purposeful because we don't get a lot of light in the kitchen and uh, so when it's sunny it comes if I put the washing in the doorway the sun dries it without me putting it outside and uh, I put it on an error and uh, it means that if it goes off cold or it rains or anything, it, there's no worry. You know, it's inside. And sometimes our garden doesn't get a lot of sun. So finding a sunny spot can be tricky. So uh, it often gets just gets cold if you put it in the garden. It doesn't really dry. So, okay. Mm, it's making my page look very dark down here, isn't it? I think I'm going to force the lamp up a bit. Mm, it's not really helping, is it? It's not making any difference at all. I know it's very hot, that's for sure. But uh, I find that these BenQ lamps get quite hot. Um, but also, um, they tend to give me an electric shock when I turn them on and off. They're touch lamp. Not on, but off. I can get an electric shock. I'm trying to colour this so you can still see without me blocking it with my big hand. <laughs> Now, I haven't really zoomed in today, I've just kept it zoomed out and I don't know if that's annoying or not. 
so uh, let me know if it's annoying and I'll uh, try and zoom in a bit more. I was just a bit worried that I might forget to move the book and end up colouring off camera, which I do a lot. Thankfully I noticed other people do it too, it's not just me. In fact i would seen Johanna Basford do it, so it makes me feel better. I don't have to be perfect. There we go, there's that one. And we're going to do the same at the top with this one. So it really is just a case of colouring over the top of the uh, mahogany colour. Now if you don't have the um, cast Arts Metallics, there's lots of other options you could use for this page. You could use any pencils and use a dark and a lighter orange shade. Um, for example, different pinks and purples and things like that. You know, if you were using polychromos, for example, I would say use a terracotta or a sanguine and then a bright orange on top for this bit. And for the um, lobster, um, use your mauve for your dark purple and then work through to your lighter ones. I can't remember what they're called. I think there's a light violet colour. And then uh, um, for your pinks, probably um, magenta and uh, a light magenta, but something in between because there's quite a jump there. Not sure what um, what the colours are called, but uh, I may use polys a lot, but I don't always know all the names. So, uh, but any um, any set, just you know a. Ten, it's usually um, two or three colours and darker to light and uh, you can get a nice transition. Now we've got the centre of the flowers to do. I thought I would do them in a sort of yellowy gold. I thought that would be rather nice. Oh, there's a train going by. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, the sun. You can see the shadow of my tripod now. I have to uh, close my blind before I take the photograph, or else I have a big old shadow across it. Right, I'm just going to come under here and finish off this. There we go. Now the yellows. I'm going to use, um, we'll start with the melange, melange, I don't know, it's got the really gold tip and we'll do that on the outside of the circle. I'm going to shut my blind because I think the page is looking too dark. It will get really black for a minute and then the camera and the lamp will adjust to the light, hopefully. Just gonna turn the lamp off and back on again because then it will adjust. Sorry, it's all light and dark and flishy flashy. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that's going to be okay. Right. So I'm gonna this um the the uh, the center of the flower has these sort of circles like a spiral. I'm gonna do the first few. The first one in a really dark layer of this melange colour and then a bit less towards the centre. So it sort of fade it. And the same up here on this one. And then I'm going to grab the Vegas yellow, which is the bright yellow and go over the top of that and just over the whole thing really just fading it a little bit towards the centre and same here now what you could do, I'm not going to because I have to go away and fiddle around with things is to get some glitter pens 
and go over all of the detailing with glitter. The sun's gone in now. Of course it has. So that is an idea for you to enhance it or just do the centre of the flowers or the petal around the edge of the petals or the detailing inside the petals or these little swirly <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry that's so loud I didn't get time to uh I couldn't pause the film and grab my hanky at the same time I'm sorry so there we go I'm gonna leave him there I'm not going to um do any more I am gonna pick him up though and try and show you him in the light so you can see the shine it's a little bit tricky to show it but hopefully you can see a little bit of shine on the pencils I can see a bit in the camera as you can see they're a bit shiny but I just like the muted colors so there he is so uh, that's taken 30 minutes to do that now it would be up to you if you wanted to do a background or not on the page um, I think he's, as I say, I think he stands out better on white than with a background. So in my opinion, no. But some people just really like doing them and that's fine. But there he is, our lobster. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you um, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, there will be a video later, of course, a short for, a not. it's not a short, it's a shorter video later. And uh, but for, for now, um, thank you and happy colouring. <laughs>